Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion, Module 5, Combustion and Thermochemistry. So, in this module, we have covered two lectures that is thermodynamic considerations of combustion, then conservation of energy for reacting systems. Today, we will be dealing with the another important topics that is lecture number 3 on this module which will cover adiabatic flame temperature, entropy and Gibbs function evaluation for reacting systems. So, in this lecture we will try to emphasize upon the very fundamental parameter that is adiabatic flame temperatures for reacting systems. Then we will move on to evaluation of entropy and with a concept of absolute entropy. Then we will see the importance of Gibbs function for reacting systems. So, let me start with the first segment that is adiabatic flame temperatures. As you know adiabatic process do not convey any kind of heat transfer into the system or out of the systems. And in fact, when you arrest this heat transfer in a closed system, this will be the typically maximum temperature that we can achieve during some thermodynamic processes. Now, with the viewpoint of reacting systems, what you can see in this figure is that if you imagine that there is a reactor in which there is some uh, fuel is coming at certain uh, temperatures, air is entering into the reactor at certain temperatures and we get the combustion product out of this reactor at certain pressure and temperatures. And through this process, we get heat out of the system and sometimes we also get the work out of the systems. Now, we can imagine a situation that as if that if you can arrest this, there is no heat transfer is possible into and out of the systems and there is no work transfer to be possible for this case and imagine that this reactor is completely adiabatic in nature. And of course, whatever combustion products remains, they remain within this reactor. So, what you can see is that through this reaction process, we if you arrest all kind of all modes of energy transfer out of these systems, then the temperature within the reactor will increase and it will increase to a maximum possible extent and that temperatures we call this as an adiabatic flame temperature or many times we call this as adiabatic combustion temperatures. So, to summarize these things what we can say that is that maximum heat transfer during a combustion process can be modeled in a steady state reactor through an adiabatic process. In the absence of work transfer, kinetic energy, potential energy, the energy liberated out of the combustion is transferred the reactor in two ways. One is through this combustion product, other is heat transfer to the surroundings. Now, the smaller the heat transfer, greater is the energy carried out by the combustion products and greater will be the temperature of the products. Now, by arresting this heat transfer to the surroundings with proper insulation in the reactor, the energy balance can be modeled through an adiabatic modeling. What it says is that if you know all the details of the combustion products, pressure and temperature precisely and by arresting all other modes of heat transfer, we can evaluate what is the maximum temperature during a combustion process. So, by definition what we say is that temperature that would be achieved by the products in the limit of adiabatic operation of the reactor is known as adiabatic flame temperature or sometimes it is also referred as adiabatic combustion temperature. And now, how do you evaluate this concept or how do you evaluate this adiabatic flame temperatures? The adiabatic flame temperature can be determined by the use of mass and energy conservation principle in which it is proposed that combustion air and combustion products form an ideal mixture. So, if you do that, we can write down this energy balance equations Q dot C B by N dot F that is number of moles of fuel per mole of fuel 
minus w dot cp by n dot f will be hp bar minus hr and that is equal to 0 because we are saying this qcb and wcb to be 0 and in such a situation what we get is that enthalpy of products and reactions per mole of the fuel are equal so this can be given through this summation form then what we can write is that for reactant and products we can write in terms of its enthalpy of formations and enthalpy change so from this we can derive one important expressions that enthalpy change of the products as a function of enthalpy change of reactants plus difference in the summation of enthalpies of formation for reactants and products so this is the basic fundamental equations that is used to calculate the adiabatic flame temperature in fact if you look at this enthalpy and if you say that this mixture is treated an, as an ideal gas then the enthalpy of the mixture can be represented through this temperature change and the specific heat and that specific heat has to be evaluated at certain temperature so let us see how we can do that so there are two ways to view this adiabatic flame temperatures one can say that the reaction tank can take place at constant pressure or the reaction can take place at constant volume this is similar to a philosophy that constant pressure based combustion in a diesel engine and constant uh, volume com based combustion in a SI engine so with this we are going to model the adiabatic flame temperatures so first case let us analyze that we are going to analyze a situation where adiabatic flame temperature is reached through a constant pressure process so if a fuel air mixture burns adiabatically at constant pressure the absolute of enthalpy of the reactants at the initial state is equal to absolute enthalpy of products at the final states so this is the conditions what we do what we derived in the our last slide and this also follows from the first law of thermodynamics so the very basic expression that we can see hr that is reactants reactants are at initial temperature ti and certain pressure p products are at now reached the adiabatic flame temperature and at p then we can evaluate the enthalpy of uh, this reactants total enthalpy of the reactants and total enthalpy of the products so this can be represented as a functional form like one can represent enthalpy as a function of temperatures so this reactants can have uh, many number of species and these species will have different enthalpies at different temperatures let us say all the reactants when they are at this they are at initial state ti and at that ti temperatures corresponding enthalpy value of combustion of course it is negative that is what this is in positive side and this is in negative side and this number is this point now when the reaction proceeds at one point of time the products are completely formed and when these products are completely formed and the process is completely an adiabatic process the temperature that it is is the adiabatic flame temperatures and if you draw just that means at that point of time we expect that the enthalpy of reactants and products would be equal so you can draw a horizontal line starting from this initial point and wherever it reaches this product we can estimate this adiabatic flame temperatures so this is all about how you can represent in graphically but theoretically we can represent these things like uh, for reactants all the enthalpy has to be evaluated at the initial conditions for products all the enthalpies values will be decided but adiabatic flame temperatures and at that pressure and which is nothing but the function of the enthalpy of formations and cp times difference in the temperatures for all the constituents this is what we view this adiabatic flame temperature for a constant pressure process now we will move on to constant volume process and here the concept is same but pressure is no longer the same pressure will not be same but volume remains same that means reaction takes at constant volume we are not allowing it is like a closed system so here the fuel air mixture burns adiabatically at constant volume 
the absolute internal energy of the reactants at initial state is equal to the absolute internal energy of the products at the final stage. So, what really matters here is internal energy balance you have to do for reactants and products. Now, here if you look at this reactants, the reactants are at initial pressure P i and temperature T i while products are formed at final pressure P f and its adiabatic flame temperatures. Then what you do this uh, normally it is difficult to calculate the internal energy. So, you have to find this internal energy through enthalpy route because enthalpy data table it is available to us. So, uh, you can get it through enthalpy information. So, U e can be written as H minus P V and pressure you know because the pressure is a measurable quantity and volume is also measurable quantity. So, that equations when you put H minus P V and what remains same is your volume remains same. So, it is a pressure difference P F minus P I. So, the equation now becomes simple. So, here the similar philosophy the enthalpy of reactants has to be evaluated at the initial conditions and for products you have to find it through enthalpy of formation with Cp information and change in the temperatures. Then we also assume that reactants and products form an ideal gas mixtures. So, we can use the ideal gas law. Now, to use this ideal gas law through this we should be able to correlate the pressure volume as a function of its molar number of moles of reactants and the initial temperatures and similarly for products number of moles for the products and the width with its adiabatic flame temperatures. By putting all these things the working equation now becomes HR for, for unit uh, HR at temperature T i P i minus H p at temperature T adiabatic and P f minus R bar into N R T i minus N p T a d. So, T i and T a d is are uh, temperatures at initial condition and adiabatic conditions final temperature and the N r and L p are number of moles per reactants and products. And we can also use them through their mass fraction analysis by converting moles into mass. Okay. So, if you do this the workable equations becomes through this enthalpy information through their molecular weight for reactants and products. Okay. Now, uh, this is the overall philosophy of adiabatic flame temperatures. If you want to draw certain inferences what message it gives for a reaction. First thing it gives is that provide although adiabatic flame temperature is a theoretical number and in fact it is difficult to achieve in a reaction process, but it gives an estimate that during a combustion process this combustion process to what extent or what is the maximum temperature that we can achieve during a reaction. So, with reference to a specific fuel at given pressure and temperature of reactants the maximum adiabatic flame temperature is defined for a complete combustion with theoretical amount of air. Now, we define this adiabatic flame temperatures at two situations at constant pressure and constant volume. Always we will see that at constant volume adiabatic flame temperature is always higher than that of constant pressure. That is mainly because we are not allowing this heat to go out into out of the system or, or the reactor. Although this is a theoretical number, but the measured value of temperature during a combustion products is much below the calculated maximum values. That means, always for the reaction we can predict this would be the adiabatic flame temperature, but actual measured value will be always less even several degrees less. That is because for several reasons first once adequate oxygen is supplied by allowing more quantities of air. That means, we expect the reaction to be complete or say complete combustion. That means, we should be able to supply sufficient quantity of air just to make a complete combustion. So, when you do this it dilutes the combustion products and thus lowers the temperatures. While modeling adiabatic temperature we say it is an adiabatic modeling by putting insulations, but uh, through this insulation it is possible to reduce it, but it cannot be eliminated completely. Now, when the high temperature is achieved for example, when the combustion products are formed and high temperature is achieved there are some products which can tend to dissociate. Now, when they dissociate the endothermic dissociation reaction uh, lowers the temperature of the products. So, these are the reasons, but conceptually the adiabatic flame temperature is a simple 
but its evaluation requires the knowledge of the composition of combustion products. At this flame temperatures always the products dissociate and they form uh, many species. Now having said this next target that we are going to discuss the concept of absolute entropy. So, uh, previously we have also talked about information during a combustion reaction uh, we find how enthalpy needs to be calculated, internal energy needs to be calculated. Here we will try to emphasize how entropy will be going to be calculated and this entropy information will tell us because entropy word comes from the second law of thermodynamics and it will tell us whether in which direction the reaction is going to proceed. So, the entropy plays an important role in the quantitative evaluation using the second law. With involvement of reacting system, the main problem that arises is to assign the absolute entropy values with respect to for a datum or certain datum conditions. To this datum conditions for entropy is considered at absolute zero temperatures and that is nothing but your third law of thermodynamics. So, the entropy value related to this datum is called as absolute entropy. Now, when this absolute entropy is known at the standard state, the specific entropy at other state can be found out by adding specific entropy change. So, this is the expression that is represented here. Now, in a combustion process, how you are going to calculate this entropy? First thing, entropy on a molar basis, if you need to entropy at certain pressure and temperatures, first we have to find out what is the reference entropy. And this reference entropy and pressure reference and temperature is it has to be found out through absolute entropy. Yes, that means there you talk about enthalpy of formation, here we will talk about absolute entropy S0 which is a function of temperature only. There is no in requirement of pressure because the third law of thermodynamics says that pressure has uh, no role at absolute 0. So, that point of time we can say the entropy that is calculated it is S0 at T and this other reference state that can be approximated that is minus R by R ln P by P reference. So, this we can get it from ideal gas through an ideal gas relations. Now, we know that typically reference pressure is known and total pressure will be known, but we do not know the respective composition or mole fractions. So, for entropy of a component I in the mixture can be calculated by knowing its mole fraction. So, this is the workable formula for entropy. Now, when you have uh, information about entropy, then you can make this entropy balance. There are two types of equations for entropy balance. One is control volume at steady state. So, in the other is the closed system entropy. So, when you consider a steady state reactor for a combustion system, we assume that air and products of combustion are each are assumed to form ideal gas mixture. In this case, uh, for an two inlet single exit reactor systems, they can be expressed in terms of per mole of well basis. So, a chemical reaction that takes place we have fuel and we have air, they mix together with their appropriate molar basis. We get CO2, H2O and N2 and with their respective molar component A, B by 2, A plus B by 4 like this. Now, for this we need to find out the entropy balance. So, entropy balance that can be calculated if you can recall this entropy balance equations. First is entropy of through heat transfer. So, we have to find the different routes how heat transfer takes place at a given temperatures and per mole of fuel that can be calculated by dividing it. Then SF that will be entropy of this uh, formation for fuel. Okay. Then in this case other components that are there is like here we have O2, we have N2. So, this number is for this fuel and this number is for O2 and this coefficients are for nitrogen. Similarly, in the right hand side expressions are given as a minus number. 
So, you can write this and finally, last term refers to the entropy production rate per control volume and uh, th there what we have the information is entropy of combustion of air per mole of the fuel, entropy of the existing combustion products per mole of the fuel. Now, same things when you assign that there is no work transfer, no heat transfer and it is a closed systems, then we can write it as entropy for the closed systems as S p minus S r is equal to delta Q by T when boundary heat transfer plus sigma. And then this equation can be for products and reactants, they can be summed up with their respective number of moles. Then and we also can find out the right hand expressions for mole of fuel and this S bar in the left hand side of the equations can be calculated at given temperature and pressure through information of absolute entropy. And the last segment of this chemical reaction is the Gibbs functions. The word Gibbs function comes into picture when you dealt with the thermodynamic property relations. And in fact, this Gibbs function has a very vital or important role in the reacting systems. And this information is also similar to what we have, uh, we do it for enthalpy. So, this Gibbs function of formation of a compound is equal to the change in the Gibbs function for the reaction in which the compound is formed from these elements. And this Gibbs function treatment is almost similar to the what you do it for enthalpies. So, the information that is required is the enthalpy of formation plus enthalpy change. Here also same thing Gibbs function of formation and Gibbs function change between the any given state from with respect to its reference stage. So, if you can recall this Gibbs function G bar is nothing but H bar minus T into S bar and this Gibbs function when you calculate they can also be evaluated through this enthalpy route. Through this process we can find out this Gibbs function or with respect to molar basis Gibbs function at given temperature at pressure with knowledge of Gibbs function of formation and this Gibbs function change and this Gibbs function change can be found out from this enthalpy and temperature and entropy. So, to calculate this Gibbs function, we in also know the information of enthalpy and entropy. Another point I need to emphasize that this Gibbs function evaluation plays a very crucial role for chemical exergy and which we will not be covering in this particular course, but chemical exergy is very important point for the learners who are in the areas of chemical engineering. Okay, with this we uh, complete this uh, lecture and based on this uh, content of this lecture, we will try to solve some of the numerical problems. So, the first problem is about this calculation of adiabatic flame temperature at constant pressure and constant volume during a combustion process for a methane air mixture and the conditions that are given is initial conditions are 1 atmosphere and 298 Kelvin and complete combustion process, but we need the products their temperature is or Tp combustion product temperature is 1200 Kelvin. This information is required mainly because all the properties needs to be evaluated at this temperature. To solve this problem and there are two cases, one is constant pressure case other is the constant volume case. So, before you do that first thing that you need to write what is methane air combustion. So, CH4 plus 2 O2 plus 3.76 N2. So, this is air and this will give you CO2 plus twice H2O plus 7.5 N2, 5 to N2. Now, for this reaction we know that this is 1 mole, this is 2 mole and here also 1 mole and here 2 mole and this is 7.52 mole. So, case 1 we say constant pressure. So, 
So, for the constant pressure we say that H reactants is equal to H products. Now, H reactants they can be calculated by summation of Ni Hi that is for reactants and before you go for we need some data. What is the data requirement? We need to find out this enthalpy of formation and this is kilojoule per kilo mole and that is we have to calculate for initial condition at 298 Kelvin. We have to get this because you need summation for CH4 this value is minus 74831 for CO2 it is minus 393546 H2O minus 241845 then we have other like N2 it is 0 because they are stable gas since they are stable gas at the conditions of 1 atmosphere and 298 Kelvin so they can be assigned as 0 and uh, for even for other situations like at 2200 Kelvin we require Cp bar which is kilojoule per kilo mole Kelvin for CO2 this number is 56.21 H2O because we require only for products 43.87 and 2 33.71. Now for reactants this number is summation of NiHi all other numbers are 0 and 2 and O2 so it is for CH4 and that value is minus 74831 kilojoule and this is for 1 mole that is Ni is 1. Then for products we say H products that is nothing but summation of products N I here we have to find out HF O plus Cp I times P adiabatic minus initial temperature that is 298. Now we have to put 1 by 1 each that is 1 mole for CO2 we have to write minus 393546 plus Cp 56.21 T adiabatic minus 298 adiabatic is unknown minus 298 second term will be 2 mole we can write the same information for water minus 241845 plus 43.87 T adiabatic minus 298 last one is 7.52 mole N2 that is first term is 0 plus Cp times Cp is 33.71 T adiabatic minus 298 so you have three terms needs to be added together and that is equal to HR is equal to HP now when we equate these things and solving there is one unknown that is T adiabatic. So this number would be 2320 Kelvin. So adiabatic flame temperature for this methane air combustions is 2320 Kelvin. 
Now same data, by using the same data, we are going to find out what is the adiabatic flame temperature at constant volume. So, for constant volume, the working equations we can write as HR minus HP minus R bar into NR Ti minus NP P adiabatic is equal to 0. This is the working equation that we derived in our earlier slides. All the information of HR and HP are known to us number of moles reactants and products also known to us from these equations. Initial temperature Ti is known. So, Ti we can write 298 Kelvin. Adiabatic temperature is unknown and what is R bar? 8.314 kilojoule per kilo mole Kelvin. So, by inserting this value values and solving we can reach that this will imply that T adiabatic flame temperature is 2887 Kelvin. Okay. So, if you can closely write all these equations separately and in this equation all the parameters are known except the unknown parameters is T adiabatic. So, we can put it and find this. So, if what you see here T adiabatic at constant volume is greater than T adiabatic at constant pressures. Okay. So, this is about the adiabatic flame temperatures. Now, next question uh, we are going to solve about uh, the entropy evaluation in during a reaction process. So, this problem will give you understanding about entropy evaluation in a closed system. So, to do that, let us first find out what is the reaction. This is a methane oxygen reactions. So, same issue that is same reaction CH4 plus twice O2. Here it is there is no nitrogen. So, directly oxygen information is given. We will give you CO2 plus H2O. And this H2O will form as a gas form. Heat transfer occurs till the products are cooled to 900 Kelvin. So, you can imagine that the reaction is happening in a closed systems of CH4 and O2 and the products are formed. Initial condition is P is 1 atmosphere, T1 is 25 degree centigrade, 298 Kelvin and final product T2 that reaches is 900 Kelvin. P2 we need to calculate what is the final pressure. On top of that we are find out to heat transfer because for entropy calculation also we require heat transfer. So, first part we can directly write the equation for closed system. This closed system when you write UP that is internal energy for products minus internal energy for reactants is equal to Q minus W. Here W is 0 and UP and UR is this. Now, this U is nothing but H minus PV and since we are using this ideal gas we can write H minus RT. So, U information we get through temperature only. So, from this we can write Q what is the final quantity of heat transfer Q is equal to H for H minus RT for products minus H minus RT for reactants. This product we can write products are formed CO2 and H2O. We can write them as H bar CO2. Of course, here all are molar values. 
plus twice moles of twice H2, twice mole of H2O. So then I will write it as for reactants. For reactants is H bar CH4 minus twice H bar O2. So this is for enthalpy part plus 3 R bar T1 minus T2. Okay, that is because you have two moles here, one mole here. So three there will be three term here. And in fact, here also one mole and here also two moles. So that will be three times of R bar into T1 minus T2. Then we have to calculate each of the information for CO2 and H2O. That we have to find through enthalpy of formations. HF bar for CO2 plus delta H CO2 plus twice times HF plus twice delta H O2 H2O minus HF bar plus delta H F delta H CH4 minus twice time HF bar plus delta H bar O2. So each information was given here plus 3 R bar times T1 minus T2. Now here we need to now try to see which needs to be ignored and oxygen is a stable component so HFO is ignored delta H is also ignored everywhere except CH4 because that is the reactants and products are at same initial temperatures CH4 and O2 then what is does not know is this so using this data table we need to find this information and then you calculate Q was minus 745436 kilojoule. Please refer my earlier slides for these numbers CO2 delta H value HFO and calculate evaluate this value of Q. Second part is final pressure. Now to calculate this final pressures we require the ideal gas equations for initial state we can write P1 B is equal to NR R bar Ti in final state P2 B is equal to N products into R bar Ti and both NR and NP are same and B is same so if we can find this P2 is equal to T2 by T1 into P1 so we know T1 we know T2 and we know P1 so this number would be 3 atmosphere so we got the information of P2 then last part of this is that is in fact which we emphasized in this particular lecture how to calculate this entropy. So entropy evaluation requires that what is the final product entropy and what is the final reactant entropy that is entropy products minus entropy reactants. So this will give you the entropy change for this closed systems. Now this SR is equal to that is reactants reactant consists of methane so s one mole s bar so if you write the equation that is ch4 plus twice o2 gives co2 plus 2 h2o so here one mole two mole one mole and two mole 
So, when you take the information from molar entropy, 1 mole of CH4 to S bar, CH4 to be evaluated at initial temperature T1, mole fraction of CH4 and pressure P1 plus twice entropy of uh, O2 at T1 and mole fraction of O2 into P1. Similarly, for products SP products this is for carbon dioxide 1 mole to S bar of CO2 products are at temperature T2 mole fraction of products Y CO2 at temperature P2 plus 2 moles then in products also you will have H2O so entropy for H2O that is to be evaluated at temperature T2 mole fraction of H2O at pressure P2. So all these things we know P1 1 atmosphere P2 3 atmosphere T1 298 Kelvin T2 900 Kelvin okay. then you have to calculate each individual parameters. Let us say how do you calculate S bar CH4 at T1 Y CH4 pressure P1. So, you have to get it through absolute entropy root. So, S bar O CH4 that absolute entropy has to be evaluated at T reference minus R bar into ln Y CH4 into P reference that is divided by P reference. So, mole fraction of CH4 1 P reference P reference gets cancelled and the data value we can find out from the table. So, this number is 186.16 minus 8.314 ln 1 by 3 because this P reference will get cancelled Y CH4 from this reaction is 1 by 3 Y O2 will be 2 by 3 Y H2O will be 2 by 3 Y CO2 will be 1 by 3 so all these numbers you are known. So this number you have to now calculate from the data table. Now similarly from this other data we can find out S bar O O2. This value is 20.5. S bar CO2 entropy absolute entropy for O2 it is 263.5. S bar H2O that is 228.3. So, by putting this number and calculating each term, we can find out this entropy change. Delta S as 96.4 kilo joule per Kelvin. Okay. So, in our previous lectures I emphasized how you are going to calculate change in the enthalpy in a reacting systems. In this particular lecture through this problem I have made these calculations that how you are going to calculate the change in the entropy in a reacting systems. Also we have demonstrated during a chemical reactions what is the maximum possible temperature and that we calculated as adiabatic flame temperature one at constant pressure other at constant volume. So, with this I conclude this lecture. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.